Hi, I'm Nathan Ness from the Cloud Native Applications Business Unit, and today I'm going to talk to you about networking within Kubernetes and your different options. So first thing we're going to draw is the IaaS network. And we're just going to draw a simple topology here with a physical router and a switch or a VLAN hanging off of it. Okay, and then we'll draw some Kubernetes constructs up here. So Kubernetes consists of clusters, and so a cluster consists of a master node or nodes. This master node provides an API. It provides a scheduler. And there's other constructs in here, but I'm not going to draw them for the sake of time. And so after you have a, a master, the cluster itself is actually built up of what are called worker nodes. So we'll name this one node 1. And we'll name this one node 2. Okay. These nodes have uh, Ethernet 0 attached to them. This can be, again, physical or virtual. And so we'll connect these nodes via, uh, to the infrastructure network. So the requirement here for a node network, or our IaaS network, is all nodes within the cluster have connectivity. This connectivity can be via L2, L3, or an overlay, just, as, how, just as, so as long as they can communicate with, uh, among each other. Okay. So after that, we go down to what's called node networking. And so this is where we assign a sitter block. And for the purposes of this talk, I'm going to use 192.168x.x. So the first two octets and my node networks are going to be 192.168. And so you can really think of each of the worker nodes as an IP router that's assigned. So this one will choose 10.0 slash 24. And then this one we're going to choose 20.0 slash 24. Okay. Connected to this is the container bridge. So this is acting as our switch. All right, and so we'll place some IPs up here just for the sake of, uh, of providing some clarity up here for when we get into the overlay topologies. So we'll IP this 50.2, and we'll set the gateway up here to 50.1, and then this one will be 50.3. Okay. So Kubernetes works a little bit differently than Docker. Is uh, In Kubernetes, that you have a construct called pods instead of containers. And what a pod consists of <clears throat> is a grouping of one or more containers. OK. So we'll just name this pod 1. And pods share the same IP address. Uh, they ha share the same local host. And then they also share IPC. So all of that's contained within uh, a set of pods. So I can have pod, one, uh, pod 2 over here with containing only one container. This can be pod 2. All right, and we'll draw a couple of pods over here. Pod 3 and pod 4. Draw some containers in them. All right. And so how do these pods communicate with each other? So a couple of different things that we can do here is the first one is we can have a flat routed topology. All right. And so in this particular case, these node networks are actually going to need to be physically advertised across the physical network. And so in this physical router, in my routing table, 
I'll have 10.0 slash 24 going to 50.2. And then I'll have 20.0 slash 24 going to 50.3. And that will be installed routes inside my physical router and across my physical fabric. Right? So if this is going to be over L3, I need all of these routes reflected uh, inside my physical network. Okay? And so that's the first type of topology. So when pods communicate across this, they're going to actually use your physical network to communicate back and forth. So there's no uh, complexities of port mapping and NAT for pods to talk to other pods. Right? And so the second uh, type of topology we could deploy is an overlay technology to have pod-to-pod -pod communication. And so what I'm talking about these two constructs here, I'm talking about pod-to-pod -pod communication. We'll get into uh, how we access these pods externally here at, uh, in a bit. And so when we have an overlay technology, these are not necessarily required anymore. So now we're actually going to tunnel over our physical network. And so when we're looking at this, then we just develop this tunnel here between our worker nodes, and this is going to be our overlay network. That's going to tunnel the pod traffic. Right? And so now when pod 1 talks to pod 3, uh, node 1 is actually going to encapsulate that packet into this overlay, and so the source of the packet is going to be 50.2, and the destination of the packet is going to be 50.3. And so what takes the place of actually providing this functionality in the mapping instead of the routing table is actually a key value store called etcd. Okay? So now we can have pod-to-pod -pod communication. We don't have to worry about static routes across our physical network, or when we stand up new worker nodes, we don't have to make sure that's being advertised across the physical network. Again, our simple requirement now is node-to-node -node communication and not necessarily all of these uh, node networks across our physical network. So now let's talk about communication. And so there's two types of communication, and that's done through a Kubernetes service. So there's two types of Kubernetes services. Uh, the first one we'll talk about is cluster IP. So this is going to be the type. Uh, the next thing that's in here is going to be an endpoint or endpoints. And endpoints is just basically going to give me a listing of pods. I also have ports what ports I want to expose. So I can do 80 and 443. And so there's other constructs within the service, but this is kind of the basic idea, is this Kubernetes service is going to allow pod-to-pod -pod communication. So now when we're talking uh, to pods, it's actually going to, pod one's going to talk to a cluster IP. And so now we get native load balancing within Kubernetes east-west because when I talk to the cluster IP, the cluster IP is going to uh, give it to one of these endpoints, and then this endpoint is going to be either go through the overlay network or it's going to be routed physically across my physical network, uh, depending which, which topology I'm in. And so that's how pod-to-pod -pod communication works within a cluster. There's another type of service called uh, node port. So node port really consists of the same constructs as the cluster IP. We have our list of endpoints here, which is going to be pod 1, pod 2, so on and so forth. And then I have ports that are going to be exposed for that uh, particular pod. And I can map these to any port that I want or an arbitrary port here. Maybe this is going to be 1022. Uh, and so when I come in externally, uh, to any of these 50.2 or 50.3 via um, 10.0.50.2 colon 1022. This is going to route me to my appropriate endpoints. And I can go to these endpoints or worker nodes uh, whether they have the pod that I'm looking for or not. And so what's going to happen here is this is going to get installed in IP tables, and regardless of which IP that I go to for a worker node perspective, I'll always get my uh, endpoint service. So this is going to be distributed across our entire cluster, and I can hit any of the worker node clusters inside of that and access my particular service that I want. And so that's how external connectivity happens as well. 
And so, again, a little recap here. We have Kubernetes service from a cluster IP level, uh, a cluster IP where we can actually communicate east-west, and then a Kubernetes from a node port. Uh, another option there would be load balancer, where I can actually come in externally and access my Kubernetes service. And then for networking topology options, I can either do an overlay network, uh, which provides some simplicity when I'm standing up or scaling out clusters, and then also I can do a flat routed network where I'm maintaining the routes of the node network inside of my physical network, uh, and so on and so forth. And so those are basically the Kubernetes networking options uh, that we see today. Thank you.